A bipartisan group of senators are working on a deal that would impose tougher immigration and asylum laws in the United States. The bill would tighten immigration enforcement while also speeding up processing for migrants. To help with that, lawmakers want to bolster staff and allow for migrant intake shutdown if the system becomes overwhelmed. Joining us uh, for more on this is CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland. Scott, so how are the talks going so far? Have you seen any progress? Hey, Lilia, the people in the room, the negotiators, are trying to express this outward optimism. And it's almost as if they opened up a thesaurus and looked <laughs> up new ways to describe being close. You know, we're near a deal. We're in proximity to a deal. <laughs> we're in range of a deal. And, and we appreciate they're mixing it up for us. Um, but those who are not in the room are raining down pessimism, saying until something's on paper and they get to look at it, they're not going to indicate any support. And the Republican critics of the Biden administration have been particularly outspoken in their criticisms of any deal that allows the Biden administration to continue with offering what they call parole, this ability to administratively let people into the country. And it's going to cost money, this immigration compromise, money for resources, money for policy changes. And Congress has proven itself uniquely inept this year at handling issues involving money, which is why we've had three near government shutdowns. Take a listen to one Republican senator we caught up with late this morning. I just don't know that it gets to the point of, um, you know, confidence level that, that would allow a yes vote yet. Certainly, um, I'm, I want to be a yes vote, but I'm not a yes vote today, from what I know. But remember, and everybody should remember this, there is no bill. And Lilia, in the last few moments, Senator Kramer's words were echoed. His criticisms and concerns were echoed by Republican colleagues from Missouri and from Alabama. All right. So, Scott, why isn't there a deal? An agreement, if you will. What are the sticking points? What are the hurdles that lawmakers are facing? There's two big ones. First of all, immigration reform happens sometimes once in a generation. These are uniquely thorny issues, difficult to work through, especially in an election year, especially with the narrow margins in Congress, and especially in a politically toxic moment, which we seem to be in. But also, the Republican nominee could be Donald Trump quite soon, and Donald Trump has expressed concerns about cutting any deals with the White House, wanting that issue moving forward in the campaign. And if Donald Trump doesn't go for this deal, you better believe there are any number of House Republicans who are ardent Trump supporters who endorsed Donald Trump would likely withhold their votes. That's true here in the Senate as well. Interesting. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit more about the campaign. Uh, of course, uh, Democrats we were talking about yesterday are talking about abortion, but Yes, immigration and the crisis of the border is numbered to only second to the economy and inflation in the minds of Republican voters. How big of this of the of an issue if there is no deal do you see this becoming on the campaign trail? Yeah, the presidential race isn't the only one on the ballot, right? The U.S. Senate could flip from Democratic to Republican control. The U.S. House could very well flip from Republican to Democratic control. And there are any number of people running for office or running the campaigns who want border security as an issue. It is a resonant, transcendent issue, according to my Republican sources. That muddies the water an awful lot. Of getting a border immigration policy deal cut takes something off the table in the campaigns. And this is all so much harder, Lilia, when it's an even-numbered year, an election year. Mm. You know what you don't hear enough? Efforts in country beyond the border. But we don't have all day. We can talk about that later. Scott McFarland, thank you so much. Good point, and thank you.